Okay, so a few weeks ago I made two videos, one about my EDC pouch and the other about my EDC backpack. And in the EDC pouch video a lot of people told me that the pouch is kind of nice and that there are a lot of useful things in it, but that it is a bit overkill and a bit too much, probably also too heavy. And to that I have to say that well, yeah, you're kind of right, which is why I also said in my EDC backpack video that I do have another EDC bag, which I usually use when I'm leaving the house, but I'm not going too far off. So if I want to travel light, I'm using that smaller bag. And that smaller bag is this guy, the Billingham Hadley Pro, the small version, the 2020 edition. But this video is not about that smaller bag. I'm going to talk about that bag in another video. But this video is about the EDC pouch that I keep in this smaller bag. So let's get into it. So the idea for this pouch is pretty simple. I want to have as much functionality as I can, but I am limited to the space that I have inside of this Maxpedition micro pouch, because that pouch always fits easily in one of the front pockets of my bag. So the idea is to keep most of the items that I might need for those, you know, day-to-day -day emergencies that just come up on a regular basis. Stuff like a phone that runs out of battery, maybe I got a headache, maybe a small cut or wound, or maybe I need to fix something on the go on my bicycle or whatever, that sort of stuff. Or maybe even something as simple as switching the plates on my cameras for my tripods. All of the stuff that I keep in this EDC pouch is obviously also just an addition to the stuff that I carry on my person in my pockets every day. And if you want to know more about my current EDC setup, check out the video that should be somewhere or linked in the description below. But let's start with the electronics part of this pouch. Nothing spectacular here really, just a small and thin power bank with a capacity of 5000 milliamp hours, as well as this small rolling square cable. The power bank has a very flat profile, is lightweight and offers enough of a charge to get me home should my iPhone ever run out of juice while I'm out and about. The power bank also has an integrated micro USB cable, which I honestly rarely ever use, but it's nice to have I guess. The rolling square cable is short and compact, it sticks together via magnets and comes with this cap to keep the ends protected. Overall, just a great form factor for a pouch like this. And it's highly functional too. It supports charging with up to 100 watts, so theoretically I could even use this to charge my MacBook Pro. And it comes with integrated adapters, so it's basically a USB-C to USB-C cable with a USB Type-A adapter on one end and a lightning adapter on the other. And since I'm still rocking the old faithful iPhone 13 Pro and the power bank only has a USB-A output, this is pretty neat. But it's still nice to also have those other ports since I might want to use a USB-C outlet, say in my car or out in a cafe, or maybe I want to recharge something other than my phone Good little package, would recommend. Now for the tools, and since the space is very limited in this pouch, keeping it all small and lightweight was a major concern. But I think with the setup that I got in this pouch, I'm still able to get a lot of stuff done, especially for how compact and lightweight it is. So we have a small Knipex pliers wrench, a screwdriver slash bit set, and a small multi-tool. The Knipex really needs no introduction, but just in case you are not familiar, these are the Pliers Wrench XS. This is basically the toothless brother to the Cobra XS, which means that it's not quite as versatile, but also that it won't chew into your bolts or round them off, which is much appreciated, especially when we're talking about working on exposed bolts on stuff like a bicycle or motorcycle. You can adjust these one-handed, and because of the mechanism in here, they will not let go once you've started gripping onto something, and because of that, they do not need a lot of gripping power, which in turn helps to transfer a lot more force into whatever you're trying to loosen or tighten. And in addition, they are also fairly light, coming in at roughly 80 grams. And then there's this little bit driver. It offers a lot of performance for its size and weight. It's essentially just a stainless steel frame with a selection of seven bits, a few rubber bands and a small hole that serves as a bit driver. You can of course swap these bits for whatever you need, but I think the bits that it came with are actually quite sensible. It's perhaps not the most ergonomic thing to work with, and since you have no way to use it as an inline screwdriver, you might not be able to reach all of the screws, but then again, this type of grip allows for a good bit of torque, and the overall design and package is just too convenient. So I love it, and I'm happy to have it in here. Last item in this category is the Leatherman Style PS. 
This is the smallest Leatherman I own, and also by far the most used one. It offers a decent, albeit small pair of spring-loaded pliers with wire cutters. You are obviously limited by having a somewhat small mouth on these, but they are great for precision tasks and combined with my trusty Knipex, I can still get a lot done with just these small items. In addition to the pliers, you also get a decent pair of small scissors, a nail file that comes in as a small inline flathead screwdriver, and you also get a small pair of tweezers. So it doesn't matter if you have an ingrown nail or you get a splinter or whatever, while you're out and about, the Leatherman Style PS is here to save the day. And that is also a good segue to talk about the last category of items in here, which is sort of a boo-boo kit. It's an arrangement of items that come in handy to deal with your everyday medical issues, such as small cuts, splinters, a headache, allergies, general tiredness and so on. So first of all, I got this small zip bag in the rear pocket of the left side of this pouch. In here, I got a few disinfectant wipes to clean smaller wounds or maybe just to clean my hands if needed and also just a few plasters which I can easily cut to size using the scissors of my Leatherman style PS. I also keep a pair of rubber gloves in here which could come in handy for medical use but also in case I have to do some dirty work like putting a chain back on my sprocket on my bicycle and I don't want to get my hands all greased up. Other than that I have this cylinder shaped item in here. It's an aluminium capsule that is divided into three segments. The pills that I keep in the top segment are basically there to help me with headaches, so I keep two ibuprofens as well as an electrolyte pill in here. The middle section is used for antihistamines to fight those allergies and an anti-diarrhea pill in hopes that I'll never have to use it. And down in the bottom section I keep a bit of wound cream. It's antibacterial and has a bit of a cooling effect and it can also help to reduce swelling a bit. So it's a good thing, especially for open blisters and stuff, and to reduce the risk of infection. And since this capsule comes with rubber o-rings, there's also no risk of leakage. And that is it for the stuff that I carry in this small and compact EDC pouch. As you might have noticed, there is no sort of knife or bladed object in here. And that is on purpose, because I tried to keep this whole setup as travel friendly as possible, so that I don't have to get anything out of it if I were to use this bag as a carry-on for airplane travel. But anyway, I hope this was interesting to you. If it was, let me know by leaving a comment down below. If you want to see more videos about everyday carry gear, camera stuff and photography, feel free to subscribe to this channel. That's all I got for you today though. Until next time, take care. Bye.